Hi, everybody. This is Tom Phelan here. Our topic for this week is the six different kinds of testing and manipulation. This is also known as how do your kids push your buttons? Uh, let's take a look. What are these three kids doing? This little boy is asking why 40 million times. And what's, what, what's he up to? This little girl is saying, I hate you. Uh, and this kid is threatening to run away from home. The suitcase is any, anywhere but here. What are these kids doing? They're all doing what we call testing and manipulation. They didn't get something that they wanted. And so they're gonna put some emotional heat uh, on their parents. And I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this many times. Let's take a look first at what is testing and manipulation. And the deal is research has shown many times that good parents are warm and demanding. And what's known as authoritative, not authoritarian, but authoritative. They're warm and demanding. Uh, you could also think of that as friendly and firm. So sometimes you are reading a story to the kids, that's the warm side. Sometimes you're telling them they can't have a piece of candy. That's the firm side uh, and so on. So as a parent, a lot of times, there's a fun side of parenting. You can do the warm side. You can give the kids what they want and enjoy the consequences. You can have a good time with them. But maybe almost as many times you have to do the demanding side of parenting, the firm side, and you can't give the kids what they want uh, and you have to deny them and you have to take the consequences, which is much more uh, unpleasant. So we call this the adult veto. The kids wanted something, you vetoed the request. The answer is no. What's going to happen now? Well, when you do the demanding side, uh, it can involve things like it's time for bed, you can't have ice cream, you may be reprimanding the child for something, can't use the iPad, it's time to get up and out for school when there's no COVID, uh, and so on. So once you've done a veto, the children have a choice. They can choose to accept the verdict and cooperate, or they can choose to test and manipulate and try and get what they want, even though you said, no, this is called button pushing. What we're going to do today is first, I'm going to tell you the six kinds of testing and manipulation. And then what we're going to do is ask the $1 million question in regard to testing and your kids. So let's look at the six kinds of testing. The first one, I'm sure you know, it's badgering. Why, why, why? Please, please, please. Just this once, just this once. It's obnoxious repetition. The second is temper or intimidation. Kid may yell, say, I'm going to hate you. Some kids say, I'm going to kill you. I had a little boy, four-year-old, do that to his mom once. And he said, I'm going to kill you. Uh, third one is threat. Uh, I'm not going to eat anymore. I'm going to not do any homework anymore. I'm going to run away from home. The fourth is martyrdom. This little girl wanted to use the iPad. Dad's using it. She's out of luck. She is pouting. What's going on here? Let's step outside of our list for a second. What's going on here is the child is actually making you a deal. The frustrated child is making you a deal. If you give me what I want, I'll knock off my testing and manipulation. Mom, Dad, what a deal. Do you want to take me up on it? Uh, <clears throat> if you do, is that good or bad? Well, it's bad because they're running the house and you're not running the house. Tactic number five is the only tactic that makes you feel best first or feel good first. Uh, gee, Mom, you got the whole the best, the prettiest eyes of anybody on the block. You're the best mom in the whole world. But you better give this little kid what he wants if you want to maintain that compliment. And physical destruction, in some ways, the worst testing tactic. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, what's kids' most favorite tactic? It's the 4 1 combo whining. Martyrdom plus badgering equals whining. And many of you have felt like this young mom does here uh, when the kids whine. It's a sound that's worse than scratching fingernails against a blackboard. So we've looked at the six tactics. Now comes the $1 million question about your kids and testing. Think of each of your kids one at a time and answer this question. Does this child of mine have a favorite uh, tactic? Okay, so does this kid have a favorite? When they tend to use a lot in situations when they're not getting their way. Well, this little girl, maybe her favorite tactic is martyrdom. She likes to whine, pout, and cry when she doesn't get her way. Maybe this little boy is a little more aggressive. When he doesn't get his way, he'll use temper, tantrums, uh, uh, intimidation, uh, and so on. Okay, so does your child have a favorite tactic? If they do have a favorite tactic, is that good or bad? A lot of parents at my seminars say good, because <laughs> you know what it is. Well, yeah, kind of, but it's really more bad. If they have a favorite tactic, it's bad because it must be working. Uh, what does working mean? It means the tactic, the testing tactic, either gets them their way or gets them effective revenge. How does a child know when they're getting their way? You just give it to them. It's obvious. You give them the cell phone. You give them the candy right before dinner. You give them the money. You give them whatever uh, it is they want. 
How do they know when they're getting effective revenge? As you see in this drawing here, they know they're getting effective revenge when you get all upset and they get you all uh, angry. So these two define your job in the demanding part of the parenting role. And it's really tough when you, it's tough to say no, and it's tough to stick uh, to it when the kids test and manipulate. So what's your management philosophy gonna be for testing and manipulation? The first thing is stop being surprised. We parents are horribly romantic and naive when we expect frustrated kids to say, yo, yeah, thanks for uh, telling me I can't use the iPad before dinner, mom. I appreciate your efforts to raise me to be a responsible person. It doesn't work like that. Kids are just kids. We gotta let them be kids, but we gotta manage what they throw at us. The second part of our management philosophy, in addition to stopping being surprised, is you wanna be calm and decisive. You wanna know what you are going to do. And so a lot of parents have tactics that they use in these uh, situations. You could might ignore. If ignore, ignoring works for you, that's fine. You gotta know how to do it. Uh, you might use distraction. Uh, some people say you wanna engage with the child, maybe use some active listening and then distract them onto something else. Does that work? Okay, do it. That's great. Maybe you want to disappear. You may disappear and go to the bathroom, or you may call a friend uh, on the phone so you can't interact with your child at that particular time. My favorite, of course, based on one, two, three magic is counting. But whatever strategy you're going to use, you don't want to whimper. Remember, calm and decisive, like the parent here on the left, no matter what's happening. Let me just elaborate on counting a little bit, because I think it's the best strategy for tactic for testing and manipulation by and large. Counting is one, two, three. Now I'm gonna explain it to you. It takes four hours to learn counting. So you're not gonna learn it. You're not gonna know how to do it well after my brief explanation today. But I just wanna point out to you that it's available. Here's how it goes. When the child makes a request <clears throat> and says, can I have some potato chips for dinner? And mom says, no. And the child says, oh, come on, that's uh, just one chip. Uh, and that's bad drink. And so the parent would say, that's one. Counting replaces repeating the explanation that you can't have the chips before dinner. Child doesn't give up. They say, I never get anything. What's that? That's martyrdom. That's number four. The child may whine it at the same time. Parent doesn't give in, doesn't start talking, doesn't get flustered, says that's two. Okay? Counting replaces the default to reasoning. But I'm hungry. The kid whines again. Parent says that's three. And there's going to be an end of the session here with a rest period, uh, timeout, break time, or whatever you choose to use, could be a timeout alternative. After a while, what's gonna happen is the session will go like this. Uh, can I have some chips before dinner? No, we're eating uh, real soon. Oh, come on, just one, that's one. Oh, all right, and the grumpy child walks away. That's an excellent ending of that particular situation. What just happened, child cooperated, and the child is learning high frustration tolerance, which is one of the best tactics you can use, uh, or one of the best traits you can have as an adult. If you're interested, we're talking about chapter 10 in one, two, three magic, which is the six kinds of testing and manipulations. And you might wanna check it out if you don't want your buttons pushed anymore. Good luck.